Welcome back to Healing Lives with Positivity 24-7, 365, 365 and 24-7. This is a platform that is dedicated to positivity, obsessively, compulsively, deliberately, just 24-7, 365, finding things to be positive about. Why? Because it is a beautiful addiction, right? If we need to be addicted to anything, we should absolutely seek to be addicted to positivity. This platform is dedicated to my inner child. <laughs> From my inner child to your inner child, congratulations. You're still alive. You did something right. Even if you made a lot of mistakes, I promise you, wherever you're at right now, you can't mess this up. This thing that we call life. If you're returning back to the platform, you know I love you so very much. Let's start this session out by way of taking three nice, deep, cleansing, go with the flow type of breaths. I love you. I do. Listen, in through the nose, out through the mouth with your feet firmly planted on the ground or whatever makes you comfortable. Again, you can't mess this up, right? So just listen to your higher self and follow the flow. It's always a good thing to do. In through the nose. So let's just see what the spirit messages are by way of our beautiful angels. You know, the angels are always talking to us. They're always giving us signs and synchronicities and things like that. And so we always have to make sure that we're in a position by way of going with the flow where we're grounded so that we can see what it is that we need to see when we need to see it. The Most High is so beautiful. I encountered probably one of the most beautiful people that I've ever encountered today. And hopefully she's watching. I did give her this platform's information. And it's so funny because sometimes we're asking for confirmation and the Most High will send somebody to clarify what it is that you know you need to be doing. So for people that are you know, in between making decisions about what your next step is in life, Spirit is saying, remember to go with the flow. Nothing is coincidental. Here I had gone into a place to get some food and they messed up my order. And I say that because I feel like me needing her was absolutely some form of divine intervention. As much as she might not realize I needed her at that moment as well, we definitely got that confirmation. I really wish I had gotten her information, um, but I was trying to get back home to get my son to homeschool and then I had some things going on at home but I just am so grateful to have briefly encountered such a beautiful soul. So I pray that she will follow those instincts to do what it is that she's supposed to do because I feel like the world is waiting to hear what it is that she has to say. So needless to say, that was just a really, you know, deep uh, connection that I felt really briefly. The Most High is so beautiful. And uh, yeah, so I'm really grateful for that. But let's just see what the spirit messages are. It's been a minute. It's been a moment. Uh, we got the spirit messages, oracle cards, and we're just going to see what the universe has to say. Holy spirits, beautiful angels. What is it that you want us to know? It says, let go of the old and make way for the new. You may find yourself being distracted by random thoughts, fears, or doubts. Don't allow yourself to be governed by them. Simply observe and choose to take aligned actions and choices. So this is reminding me of being very deliberate in everything that you do, right? Everything that you do, be that big or small, it absolutely is adding to uh, the bigger plan for your life. It's 522 on the clock. I love when the numbers are synchronized. I love when the angels give us confirmation 
that we're going the right way. So this is about being intentional, right? With everything that we do. Uh, I feel being positive is an intentional action, consciously deciding to be positive. You know, we could be so many things in the world right now, considering the circumstances with just the world and, you know, spirituality, religion, and then and, and the war and just a lot of things going on, right? But I feel like working your side of the planet, being kind in your uh, own lane absolutely does add to something that is greater, right? A global movement. There's so many beautiful light workers, so many beautiful churches, real churches, okay? Faith-based churches, uh, you know, religious, you know, organizations, spiritual organizations, however you want to flip it and spin it, it's all a part of God's divine, beautiful plan. And when those energies come together simultaneously, consistently, deliberately, intentionally, baby, it's such a beautiful thing, isn't it? Did y'all feel that wave of positivity? Like, let's get into it. I just got huge confirmation from the angels. So let's just see. I feel like that's what that means. So letting go, it's not coincidental that we're under a pre I was going to say preliminary, <laughs> pre-full moon, okay, the full moon, you know, the moon is a very emotional energy, uh, Cancerian energy, it reminds us to release that which no longer serves us, it also uh, reminds us to bring in certain things that we want to happen, right, so in lieu of what it is that you're removing, this could be a thought, a person, a place, a thing, um, you know, the conversation I had today was, you know, feeling when it's time to move on to something new, right, I'll tell y'all real quick, when I was at my job, I just knew it was over. I was like, okay, this is it. I've done all that I, I could do. I wasn't getting any joy out of it. And I'm like, this is not what my God wants for me. I don't feel like, like, I just felt like, you know, <laughs> it was like, I don't mean to laugh, but I promise you, it was like in the middle of the day. And I said, oh, I feel like my internal clock is going off. Like, the alarm was ringing, like you're supposed to be doing something else. It's time to let this go. I'm like, oh, but I make I make like $65,000 a year. I'm a single mom, my rent is cheap. You know, I got a nice car, I work from home. I was very comfortable. And then I got thrusted out of my comfort zone and it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Now here's the beautiful part. Everything that we do leads up to something else, right? What does that mean? That job molded and shaped me to be here with you right now. I got so many good lessons out of that. I met so many beautiful people. So many people touched my life and I touched a lot of people's lives as well. You know, a lot of people don't know or maybe I shared that here on this platform, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, I used to take about 3,000 calls a month by myself, oh my God. Ooh, in the middle of the pandemic, baby, I was running my own ministry and I didn't even know it. My calls weren't like everybody's calls, okay? If you can tell, I got the gift of gab. And baby, I also have a really good listening ear. I could feel what people needed, right? Uh, there were some things medicinally that I did not believe in, okay? I'll leave that for people who feel like the FDA has enough controversy going on. That's a whole nother topic. But I was really in a holistic state of mind. I knew that a lot of what I was being paid to recommend to people was just going against my spirituality. I was like, I can't do this no more, you know? Um, and I feel like the latter part of that job, it got more intense with us imposing on people. Like, you gotta take this shot. You gotta get that. I'm like, what the hell? No, like, I don't wanna be the devil's advocate, you know? So I got the hell out of Dodge, didn't know how. I was going to do it. And I would always hear people say, you know, I just stepped into my calling and everything worked out. I'm like, okay, but I got bills. I got children. Like, how is this going to work? You know, I like to get my nails done. You know, the little things in life that make me happy. Nevertheless, it's led me here. Okay. So this platform is fairly new. You know, I have the other platform that is still actively growing where I am in spiritual court. Uh, the interesting part about that is the controversy that I was facing. You know, I come from a Christian faith background. Uh, everybody in my dad's family is a minister. And so they really didn't believe in me being able to channel spirits or talk to angels. And I'm like, but it says in Ephesians, like I have all the clairs, like make it make sense. And so I had to, I had to go up against, you know, everything and everybody. And I compromised, um, 
a set of ideas, I guess, that somebody wanted for me, right? Yeah, a set of ideas, a way of being, a, a controlled atmosphere, a very strict way of being. And I just decided like, you know what? No, me trying to be who you need me to be, that has never worked. That has never satisfied you or me. So I can't people please you on this. And I've never been like a people pleaser, but I was like very, uh, you know, obedient to my parents. You know, I believed in, you know, okay, honor thy mother and thy father and thy day shall be long. And I did that until I found the scripture that said, tempt not your children to anger. And I'm like, listen, I got to get out of this box. Like, I love you guys. I don't want to upset you, but I need to get out of this box. This cookie cutter idea of who it is that you need me to be. And so I did. Was it uncomfortable? Yes. Yes, a narrow path because sometimes all you got is spirit and you have to keep yourself encouraged and you have to be your own cheerleader and you have to be, you know, like, yeah, you really got to like, you really got to like realize, hey, there's nobody coming. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah, listen. Okay, so I just had to go on the tangent, you know, for whoever that story is for, take it. You know, maybe it will inspire you to tell your story. I'm at a place now where, you know, I can laugh about it in hindsight but when I was in it, child was laying in the bed like, how am I going to do this? What is I supposed to do? And spirit was showing me like, listen, every day I was like, oh God, I got to leave this job. Now there was a point that I loved the job, but my time there was up. It was done. Even with my platforms, you will see that they've changed a lot because who I am is changing. So naturally, um, yeah, we got to go with the flow. So when this says let go of the old and make way for the new, that could be a demonstration. Maybe you need to get rid of some old things in your house. Maybe an old, you know, dress or a pair of shoes you've been holding on to. Like, yeah, okay. I'm just saying, sometimes there has to be a literal, figurative, spiritual demonstration to make things real, right? Nevertheless, this says, if you pay close attention, you will notice that the doors that were once closed are now open and or opening up. Thank you, spirit. Just in a different form. Things may not appear exactly as you had envisioned, right? So I say that again uh, today. You know, here I am. My food got messed up. I had to go back in and have the guy remake it. And I had to get out of my car. And I encountered somebody who was a walking, breathing confirmation of something that I needed to uh, get clarification on, right? So spirit says, you need to build that other platform. You know, you've been real... You, you really been going hard in spiritual court. You've been going ham. I love spiritual court, y'all. It's therapeutic. You know why? Because I feel like we laugh about the pain. We laugh about what we know people are doing that we now realize has no power over us, right? That's what that other platform represents, okay? Um, so nevertheless, and sometimes it gets a little wonky, you know? We, we channel uh, various energies, you know, we're human beings and sometimes we get upset when people are still in our energy, but guess what? At the end of it, I hope I make you laugh because I know I laugh about it. Child, I laugh to keep from crying, literally. Um, so pay close attention, right? Here was, a, here was an answer to a prayer that spirit set up, that I was meant to cross paths with this person, even if it was just momentarily, very briefly, very quickly, I was meant to encounter her. She was an answer to my prayer. So spirit is saying, pay close attention. Sometimes the answers don't show up like you anticipate, but it's always going to come right on time, right? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we ask for, you know, uh, a sign and sometimes you're driving down the street and you literally see a sign that says, no, you're going the wrong way <laughs> or you're going the right way or go this way. Everything in your atmosphere is always talking to you. And this is why it's so important to be grounded. Breathing, who knew that breathing would, would be the thing that you would need to do more than anything? When we breathe, we go with the flow. We slow down our thoughts. We can, you see the way I'm just, okay, I'm gonna, uh. and I used to do that on the phone, y'all, when I talked to people. <laughs> they would call in frantic. Remember, I'm dealing with people that are getting test results and you know, people passing away. Some people are angry because maybe the last 
representative, you know, accidentally dropped the call or whatever the case. So I would just calm them down. I said, you know what, Spirit, use me. Every time I logged into that job, into that computer, I would say, Spirit, you know what, this company works for me and I work for you. That was my attitude. So much so that the higher ups started listening to my phone calls and their training sessions now all over the world, or at least Southern California and or Georgia, I think is where they're primarily based, this medical company, their classes are based on my customer service skills. Isn't that amazing? I'd like to take a little credit for that, you know? I started to see certain things in the training that I'm like, y'all took this from my phone calls. Like, you took a way of me doing something and you made it your own. And I just sat back and I gave all praise due to the most high God. And I knew, okay, I'm leaving here. My work is done. So now in their classes, you know, they say, well, we're not going to focus on the time. We just want you to really talk to the patients and get to know them. You know, like what? Okay. Now, whereas before it was a time issue, whatever you had to say, you had to get it out in four minutes and 32 seconds. I told my supervisor, I was like, that don't work for me. They're like, why can't you just follow the rules? <laughs> Because, no, I'm not just about to hang up on Mrs. Such and Such. She's 80 years old. What happens when I get 80? I want somebody to be just as patient with me, right? But I would calm them down. And so now, you know, they're like, well, the last rep, blah, 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 blah. they be cursing me out. I had people curse me out. You beep, beep, beep. What are you guys doing over there? And I would go, okay, listen, I don't know what happened on the previous phone call but you got me, okay? So let me try to help you. That's how I would do it. I would still say what I wanted to say. I wasn't no punk on the phones. And I would just breathe and I would talk to them. And by the end of the call, they'd be like, you know, I was having a bad day. And I'm like, I know, it's okay, you know. I'm sorry that I screamed at you, but that other rep, I'm like, I know, some of them are in training. I would even clean up other people's crap, you know what I mean? That's just who I was, that's who I am. You cannot train somebody to be that. You either have that in you or you don't. And I stood out and I used to downplay my, my gifts. I said, no, you know what? I love people. When they would call me in for my annual review, they're like, well, what is it that you feel you need to improve? I'm like, well, you know, I could probably cut down on my talk time, you know, cause child people would tell me everything. They would open up. They would ask for my number like, oh my God, can we call you? I'm like, no, I'm kind of at work. They're like, oh my God, I forgot you were at work. You sound like somebody that I know. For every single person that I talk to, I pray that I see them in the afterlife, baby. I talked to millions of people. We had tears. We cried. We loved. We In the middle of the pandemic, when people were dying, we kept faith and hope. We talked about God. We politics, you know? So that job really had a huge impact on what I'm doing now, talking to people all over the world. And Spirit says, you're ready. And I'm like, ready for what? I'm kind of comfortable here. I get to work from home. Listen, I can see my children, okay? But my answer kept coming. I talked to a guy, he says, you know, I've worked for this company for 30 years. He says, don't let this company kill you. He says, Whoever is listening to your call, they need to know that you are a great asset to this company. That was my sign. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. He also told me that his friend refused to retire and he was supposed to retire and he kept postponing his retired date and he never made it to retirement and he died. All this money in his 401k, that was my sign. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. I calmly sat there at my desk. I dropped a couple of tears. I called my supervisor. I said, how do I hand in my resignation? She said, excuse me? Yeah, how do I resign? I didn't know how I was going to do it. And the fact that I was resigning it meant they wouldn't give me unemployment. Child, it's a whole other story. I need to put that in the book because I ended up getting unemployment, y'all, just so you know. But it was crazy. I'll tell you about it later. Listen, okay. So back to the story here and or the downloads by way of the angels. What did the angels have to say? So if you pay close attention to everything in your atmosphere, your answers are there. The moment you decide to go with the flow and just relax, everything that you need, everything that I need will come into fruition right on time. Divine timing. All you have to do is breathe. This says find ways to fill your cup. Be self 
full. Keep yourself full, right? Follow your heart and always trust your intuition. They say that first mind is really the truth. The second one is fear. Never second guess your first intuition, your first intuitive nudge. That is there for a reason. It is an internal compass that the creator gave us so that we will know which way to go. Listen, go deep within, it says. Find your triggers and address them one by one. Self-healing is the best healing. Only then can you offer the best version of yourself. So what I get from that is being the best version for myself first, filling my cup and my overflow is what I offer to others. You know, I heard a um, beautiful teacher, beautiful, beautiful mother, uh, Iyanla Van Zant say that one time. She says, you know, when my cup is empty, I can't, I'm not good for anybody, right? But it's one thing to be so calibrated that you intuitively can feel that. You know, when I know that I'm like, being pushed to the edge is when I start to get irritated. I'm like, ooh, something's missing. Do I need to take a nap? Do I need to take a cleansing bath? Do I need to take a walk? Like, what is it gonna take for me to fill my cup? What is it gonna take? I'm out of gas, like I'm, I'm, I'm on empty and that's no good. So I respectfully tell people, hey, I need three days. You know, if they're really my friends, they really love me, they will understand. And that's the kind of people I need around me because if they were to tell that to me, I'd say, you know what, take your time. You don't need my permission, but I appreciate you telling me, hey, I'm gonna take three days. Because that's self-care, that's self-love. Sometimes I turn off the phone. Sometimes I'm not on the phone. Sometimes I just sit in one spot and I just breathe. Okay, and my son's like, what are you doing, mom? I'll be with you in a minute. When I come out, I'll be a better mom. Right now, I need to figure out what I'm feeling, what is triggering me, right? Most times, it's because I need to do something that I'm not doing, like writing the book. Y'all, I got so many books in me, so many stories. Oh my God. And I'm a writer. I don't know if I told y'all that I co-wrote a book, okay? I don't know if it's still available, but the love of the Allah people, I think is what he named it, okay? His name is... uh. <laughs> Kevin 6x okay you can find it on Amazon I co-authored that book that is a true story I was living that living a life with a narcissist ooh yeah and I stopped writing because of trauma right so yeah I still need to I still need to write but I'd rather just speak and just have something type it for me I don't know that I need to do that with my hands anymore, right? As far as movement and having something to do. Needless to say, that was long-winded. Shout out to the people that appreciate my long stories. I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> this says, when a door doesn't open, don't waste your time or energy trying to make it open. Don't force something that doesn't fit your circumstance. It's closed for a reason. You are being redirected. Something far bigger and better. Endings are a part of the cycle of life. They make way for wonderful new beginnings and opportunities. Yeah. You know how we say, don't, don't, uh, what is it? If it doesn't fit your circumstance, don't take it. When we're channeling energy on that other platform, right? What is it? What is it? Uh, take what resonates. Thank you. <laughs> and leave the rest for somebody else to take. It's giving, you know, take the meat, spit out the bones. If it's not your story, listen, take what you need to take, apply it to your circumstance. What doesn't apply, don't force it. Why? Because why would you do that to yourself? You know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's enough of a challenge dealing with, you know, overcoming versions of yourself. So don't add more to your plate that doesn't fit your circumstance, right? Yeah, this says resilience is one of the strongest qualities you have. Remember that. It has gotten you through so many trials and tribulations in the past, and it will continue to do so. Lean on the inner tower of strength anytime that you need it. You've got this. I need to, I need to obsessively, compulsively, deliberately think about that card for the next 24 hours. I'm gonna challenge myself. I hope I hope you all will join me in doing that. Um, and just saying, even if you don't say this whole, uh, what is this? 
message <laughs> in its entirety, just constantly saying, I've got this, I got this, I'm doing good. Congratulations, you know, say that to yourself, obsessively, compulsively, deliberately for the next 24 hours, make it a part of your spiritual makeup, your spiritual DNA, I've got this, I'm doing good, I've got this. The beautiful part about the mind is that it believes anything that you tell it. The beautiful part about your body, it believes anything that you tell it. So when people ask me like, oh my God, you look so young. I'm like, well, I always tell myself I'm getting younger all the time. Even when I talk to people that are elders, okay, that have been on the planet for 70, 80 years, you know how I refer to them? And they, it just tickles them all the time. I go, hey, young lady. Hey, young man, they just crack up. He, <laughs> the inner child in them cracks up. I love my elders. I love people. I, I, I really love my elders and I love children. I love everybody in between. I feel like once we see everybody as a child, it's easier to deal with the world, right? Yeah. Try to always see life through somebody else's eyes. It really does help. 10, 10, you could be seeing 10, 10 on the clock. That means balance. I feel like this full moon is bringing balance into our lives, okay? And you know, when there's balance, things flow in a way that they need to, which is always a good thing. This says, keep your thoughts positive and be patient, it says, as everything is working out for your highest good. Trust that your angels are working behind the scenes to help you. I love that. Yeah, we all got guardian angels. So constantly, deliberately, consistently for the next 24 hours, just say, I am patient, okay? Even if you don't wanna speak those words out, you know, you still have that voice in your head, I am patient. Now here's what I've learned, y'all. <laughs> it's so funny, cause today, you know, this experience that I had in getting my food, I said to this beautiful angel, as we're sitting there, I said, you know, God must really be teaching me patience. Because the guy that was making our food didn't speak English. He still didn't get my wings right at the end. And I was like, you know what? It's okay. She says, you know, I just try to think about what somebody's going through. It's 544 on the clock, confirmation. And I told her, I said, you know, I think maybe God is teaching me patience. So I'll take that. So as I sat there, I just took in the moment. I took a deep breath. I said, you know, let me sit down. And I sat down and I just said, you know, everything happens for a reason. That's my first go-to. Like, okay, I'm here for a reason. What is it that I'm supposed to be learning? What is it that I'm supposed to be seeing? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Because this moment is teaching me something. Uh, be that good, bad, or indifferent. I need to consider that in order to have a real conversation with myself, right? Not for anybody else, but for myself because I'm my number one fan. I'm the one that's gonna go the furthest for me. Listen, you are you are your number one person, 333. Ascended Master Energy. Why did I show the cards? Maybe because I do that on the other platform. I just, it's a habit, okay? It feels really good when I do it. This says 333, you are being called upon to use your spiritual gifts as a light worker, okay? So if you're being called to do something in a spiritual community, go, okay? There's nobody like you, right? Is this something new? No, but guess what? You're the something new because there's nobody like you. Even when I came to the spiritual community, I, you know, I was in such a very authentic space, like of who I was. I wasn't looking for uh, people to like me. I just had a message and I knew that this message was for certain people and that's who I wanted to talk to. But I think with my dad passing away right before I came just to the public eye, I was just like, I was keeping it a buck. I was keeping it real. I was like, look, this is who I am. Here's the message. This is what's going on. Who is this message for? Okay. They're like, oh, we're going to send you a donation. I'm like, send me a dollar. It's going to pay for your candle so I can get you a Jesus candle, all white candle, whatever you want to call it. And I was literally doing that. And I literally lived off of donations for a whole year. A lot of people don't know. I didn't monetize right away. It's crazy because I could have monetized before and I was just doing the work, doing the work. And Spirit was like, go take care of the back office. Go look at your stats. 
I'm just working in the working, didn't take one day off for one year straight. And maybe it was my way to grieve because I, I didn't cry. It took me a whole year and a half to really cry, y'all. Maybe longer, like two months before I came here. I was just in a hotel room, a really nice hotel room, waiting for my house to get ready. They ended up giving my house away, y'all. A lot of people don't know that I was going through it right before I moved here, right? And then I found a new house. God just gave me the house. Like, like this is funny. I just love spirits so much. But um, in that hotel room, just it, it hit me. I was like, <gasps> I did some deep breathing and I was wailing like a baby. The tears were flowing. I was crying. I was purging out stuff. I'm like, where is this coming from? It was under a full moon, child. I think I cried so good for like three days. And then after that, everything started to flow. I had released so much, right? Because I'm, I am a daddy's girl. I was my father's only child. He was my everything. And when he left, I was like, whoa, game over. Okay. And Spirit was like, you need to go to the public eye. You need to, I'm like, what? Public eye? To do what? Why? How? What? My family thinks I'm crazy. They think I'm a witch. I can't do the car. Like, it was so much. But I knew stuff. I knew things. They're like, how do you know? You said that was going to happen. How did you know? I'm like, I've had this gift since I was little. So it was like, I needed to be unapologetic. But once daddy was gone, baby, I'll put it in the book. Needless to say, I was unapologetic, honey. And I was not curbing my enthusiasm and my authenticity. And I had people that were still trying to come from my destiny. I was like, you sure you want to wear these shoes? You sure you want this destiny? That means you got to go back to the beginning and walk through everything I walked through. If I were you, I'd go back to my own destiny and clean up my mess and leave mines alone. It's, <laughs> it's bad enough that I barely made it to this platform, okay? Listen, nevertheless, this says you are being called to use your spiritual gifts, so go do it. Nobody's like you. Even if a thousand people are doing the same thing that you're doing, guess what? You have a unique personality and there's something that you need to say to people that get you is what I wanted to say. This says uh, um, your angels are assisting you in all of what it is that you're doing, but your spiritual gifts as a light worker is something that you will use assisting all of humanity. Thank you, spirit. Live your truths and be a positive light to others. Remember, I am powerful. I am patient. I am powerful. Give me one more card, please, and thank you, angels. I feel like they're going to give me two, but maybe one. Okay. 444. Four, four. Okay, so a lot of numbers that are confirmation. Ooh, at the bottom of the deck is 2-2. Two, two. Some of you could be manifesting new friendships, new unions, at the top of the deck, one, 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 I am creative. So there's something that you need to create. Oh, this message is for me too. I'm such a creative person. <laughs> I got a little lackadaisical, okay? But I need to create my stuff. I'm very artsy. Nevertheless, four, four, four. Remember, I am creative. I am patient. I am powerful. I am protected, right? obsessively compulsively deliberately just every time you get a chance just say that whisper it silently you can't mess this assignment up this says trust your journey trust the way that your life unfolds and trust that you are where you need to be at the present moment i am protected okay i remember when my father passed um, I started doing some more shadow work because I had to return back home and I hadn't been there since I was two years old, okay? And listen, I had to redo, relive, reevaluate some things there. And I remember thinking, who's going to protect me? Like, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's my number one guy, my dad. And I remember laying in the bed, wrapping my arms around myself, because that's something that I learned to do when I lost my baby. Um, and it got me through and I wrapped my arms around myself and I just kept saying, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. I'm protected, I'm protected. 
I am loved. Even when I didn't feel it, child. Let me tell you, I'm saying it real calm now. In those moments, I was not okay. <laughs> I can laugh now. Like looking back at myself, like two, three years ago, I'm laughing at her. You know why? Because we're here. Here's two, three years later. Hi, hey, how you doing? Older self, yeah. I go back into the shadows and I lay down with her. I hold her, that version of myself, and I let her know, listen, it's okay, we make it. I know, I know, it looks real crazy right now. It's gonna work out, right? Always go in the past and support yourself. I don't care how far back you gotta go. Maybe you need to go back to the womb, okay? Imagine that, right? I'm safe. I'm protected. Hold that little girl, hold that little guy, sit them on your lap and say, I am safe, I'm protected. These are things that I've had to do to save my own life. When I realize, okay, nobody's coming, right? It's a blessing when the Most High sends people into your life to hold a space of love and light for you. But remember, you don't wanna empty somebody's cup because then you got two people that aren't good for anything. The last thing you need is somebody getting into your sick bed. So if you're not feeling good, then go get well, right? That means that people can only do so much for you. They have to eventually go back to their own lives and live their life. So it's a blessing when people come into our lives if for a moment, permanently, temporarily, uh, to just give us what we need to have, you know, in that moment and keep moving forward, right? So I had to learn, okay, okay, yeah, I got to be my own savior. Like, I could lay here, I could give up, I could, okay, you know, dying wasn't an option, you know, I, I wasn't brave enough to take my own life. <laughs> I just kept saying, no, because uh, when I went to my therapist, who ended up becoming a really good friend of mine, child, we, we were talking on the phone outside of the therapy sessions. We worked for the same company. But she was the one that talked me through, not even talked me through. Let me just say how she says it. I would always say thank you. And she would laugh at me. She's like, I didn't do anything. All I did was sit here and you just needed somebody to, to talk to. I'm like, you're right. I did all of this myself. I take full credit. <laughs> but we ended up becoming really good friends. And um, she would um, say to me, you know, you just need you just need an outlet. And she told me. She says, you know, you would be an amazing therapist. I'm like, therapist? Girl, bye. I'm like, I'm trying to fix myself. A life is this. You know, I'm a single mom. I was finding reasons and excuses to not be who I really needed to be. But then when I looked at the larger scheme of things, right, every single job that I've been in, I've communicated. I'm a natural communicator. I didn't see that as a gift. I didn't see that as a gift. I didn't see that, you know, on my report card when it says talks too much when I was in second grade, that that was a gift. I had a lot to say. Oh, I was a fun little girl. Oh, if y'all can only imagine now. Oh, honey, I was a hoot, honey. I was so funny. I was still a protector. I would always protect the children that were getting bullied, you know. I say, stop talking about them. Like, that was me. Child, I was called in judgment court in kindergarten. I, I'll never forget it. I remember kindergarten and first grade, there was this girl that used to come to school and she would smell like a little pee-pee, right? Okay, well, so what? You know, sometimes you wet the bed. Nobody knew what was going on in her house. I could show y'all, if I could show y'all, the elementary picture. Unfortunately, I lost that photo. Um, me on the school picture with her, all the kids would talk about her. And I'm like, stop talking about her. And on the picture, there's the whole first grade kindergarten class or whatever grade it was. We were little. And then there's me and her off to the side. And I got my hand on her like this. And we're just standing there. And I said, come on, you can stand with me, right? So I've been a natural <laughs> practitioner. And all the other kids be like, she stinks. She smelled like pee-pee. I'm like, how would you like it if somebody said you smell like pee-pee? Get away from here. <laughs> I had to have been five or six. I want to say I was six. Child, but I knew how to talk. One thing my parents were, were communicators. So I had a very extensive vocabulary, okay? <laughs> yeah. But I remember being a protector, you know? It didn't feel right to me watching people bully her. I'm like, what is this? Like, what's wrong with y'all? I'm still that way to this day. 
still that way to this day. Yeah, that's me. Like, that's that's who I am. Like, I don't like that. Leave people alone. And I really feel like that's what that other platform gives me. I feel like, you know, I'm interceding on their behalf, asking permission. Source, do you give me permission to intercede by way of intercessory prayer, by way of bringing down justice and judgment? Because this, what somebody did to you was not right. I don't like that. No, you can't just get away with that. Go somewhere and heal, fix yourself, and stop hurting people, right? That's what spiritual court is for me. Child, I done went on a tangent. I feel like I needed this, y'all. I feel like I needed a spiritual court recess to come here and talk to y'all and just get all this out. So thank you for allowing me to do that. I love y'all. This is the part of the spiritual session where we close. And we just give thanks and gratitude and we wrap our arms around ourselves and tell ourselves we are safe. Imagine your little child, you know, allow that child to be free. That's what I do or do whatever you feel you need to do. Again, it's your life. You don't need my permission. I just like to suggest it because I'm reminding myself of what I need to do. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. So just uh, wrap your arms around yourself, hug yourself tight and remind yourself, hey, I have every right to be here. I am safe. I am a part of this universe. I have every right to be happy, no less than the animals, the birds, the stars, the moon. I am here, and this is just what it is, and I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> That's my attitude. I love y'all. I do. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, as always, peace be with you.